I don't know if it's a Q, but I'm guessing it's a Q because I can actually count, unlike Peas. Uh, welcome to Hot Sauce Sports, where I don't want to do Peas' as a dumbass intro. Uh, my name is Terry Tam, and I'm here with uh, John, my buddy John, and Eagle at Master Control. How's it going, boys? We'll go with you, John, first. What's up, everyone? How's everyone doing? How about you, man? Not bad, not bad. Excited to get going. Happy to be back. You know, Eagle. surviving the apocalypse. Missing Peas a little <laughs> bit this week, but that's okay. It's so weird because uh, usually I, I can see Eagle so I can talk to him. But like being a host when you're doing like the Skype shit is weird because one, I can't hear myself. Which is very fucking weird. Eagle, I hope you can hear me clearly. Yep, you're good. I don't know if you are because for some reason my mic was off. I still hear you good though. Uh, um, John, what have you been up to this week? I know we had the draft today. We were supposed to do it live. Uh, um, how's it been going? I know your Vikings are suffering a little bit, but whatever it is, what it is. Yeah, well, uh, NHL draft provided a nice distraction. Kirk has been killing me. I blame him for everything wrong in my life, but <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll we'll hope for better days. But uh, exciting things for the NHL front. Habs uh, Habs got Caden Gooley, so uh, you know I'm excited about it. But uh, that's some been, people, uh, it's been it's been a very hockey uh, focused week. Some people aren't, eh? It's fucking weird. Uh, a lot of people aren't. I don't I don't really hate the pick that much i mean we'll get into it in weekly sauce we'll see what we'll, we'll figure out a time where you alex the intern and i can get together and talk about it but we'll cover it but I, I didn't hate the pick that much because we needed a big defenseman and i think that he's a good player he's ranked in the first round so i mean i didn't hate it that much i mean i like katie Gooley. i think I, he's a good player but i don't know what's going to happen with him yeah absolutely you can never go wrong when you have a big mean defenseman that can score but hopefully he can score. That's the upside we're counting on. So we'll see how it goes. But like you said, we'll uh, we'll dive into it deeper on Weekly Sauce. So, yeah. My big news for the week, I managed to convince Terry to put a Pokemon background now that he figured yeah. out how background effects works on cameras. And for some reason, every time John talks, it replaces my screen. So I don't know how to fix that. I'm not going to try and fix it just in case I screw something up. So we're going to leave it as is. Um, is uh, it's like a quasi big week in sports. I mean, uh, we saw the Lightning win the Stanley Cup last week. Uh, Pease and I spoke about it a little bit. Um, I wanted to talk about it with John since John's our hockey guy. Um, what do you think of the Lightning? Is this going to be a dynasty going forward? What's going to happen with them? What do you think? It's unfortunate. I don't think that, like we'll get to see a dynasty because of COVID and the flat cap. Like it, it, I think before COVID, the expectation was to go up. I think like five or six million. That's yeah. a whole player for these guys right now with their situation they're in. Um, but I think that they. They showed everyone that you really need to have grittiness in your lineup. Um, and they, they kind of just beat every team into submission. And, and they kind of learned from their mistakes against Columbus. And I'm happy to see them win. And, uh, and it, it, I think they're due because they've, they've been a perennial powerhouse for, for years now. Man, if they fucked it up this year, uh, man, I would have lost hope completely for Stamkos. I wanted him to win a Stanley oh, Cup so bad. Yeah, I wanted him to win so bad. And, finally, and the fact that he can come in in a game, even being visibly injured, score a goal, contribute to that win. They ended up winning 5-2 that game, whatever it was. Yeah, exactly. uh, For him, it's got to be it's got to be a great feeling just to know that you you contributed in some sort of way. It's not what he hoped, but you still he still had that goal, so. Yeah, and Alex the intern said uh, a few weeks ago that if if he was Steven Stamkos, he would refuse to put his name on the Stanley Cup. <laughs> How about we give Alex a ring and see what happens? <laughs> yeah, let's give Alex a ring. I would love to see him say no to a ring. <laughs> Imagine, though, you, for Steven Stamkos, you're the captain of your team for 12 years, whatever amount of years it is. Um, you finally get to the finals. You basically built that team because that team was built around you. You oh, are yeah. the glue. Yeah. You came the C. in and, and started the movement. And wearing the C in hockey is a lot different than in football or in basketball. The wearing the C in hockey is very different in the locker room. Very true. How much do uh, you think a t Stanley Cup ring would like hawk you at a, a pawn shop or something? Oh, I, I mean, at a pawn shop, not much, but like the value of those rings are about 20, 25K. So yeah. you think Alex the intern would not take a free ring because he didn't earn it? Well, uh, that's according to him. Uh, I'm not putting words in his mouth. He said he wouldn't take the ring. So, well, we'll let him clear the air on this one. Free 25K, <laughs> that's the way I look at it. We'll ask him tomorrow on Weekly Sauce and see what he said. <laughs> Um, so the NFL, man, the NFL has been fucked up this week. We got COVID cases, postponed games, everybody freaking out about their fantasy teams. Uh, my Cowboys suck. Uh, Vikings not so great. Your Vikings not so great, John. Uh, the Packers are good. Fuck you, Eagle. Um, and it's just been a really crazy week. And it's the first time where I actually think that the season might not finish. Yeah, that's fair. 
Uh, the the list just continues to grow. Like uh, with Tennessee, there was a bit of glimmer of hope after it all kind of wrapped up because it seemed like that it might have been where it ended. And now it's just from every team, it's coming from every angle, and it's it's starting to seem a little bit like baseball. Yeah, and the thing about baseball is that we kind of stopped hearing about all the COVID cases. We don't know if there was actually COVID cases or not. I think baseball is a sport where you would assume that they would hide this information. Um, but NFL has been pretty open. I mean, they've said everything. Uh, they they announced this. The, they announced today that Tennessee, or was it today or yesterday? Tennessee like didn't follow protocol, and that's why a lot of them got got uh, got infected. If these players fuck up my fantasy season, I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> like that's pretty much what, what's gonna happen now. I don't know. Even though I'm not doing that good anyway. Oh, as I, I'm a commissioner in one league, and, and thankfully it's just a, it's a fun league, so there's not too much money on the line. But just yeah. managing that and the COVID headache, like I can't even handle it. And then I have my own team that I have to try and do myself. So yeah, exactly. Uh, so news coming in this week. Finally, uh, the biggest, probably one of the biggest dumbos in Texas football history, Bill O'Brien is fired. And uh, he's fired as the head coach. He's fired as the gym. And he's also fired as the offensive coordinator. Bill O'Brien's gone. And Romeo Cornell comes in. I mean, I, I think that this was long overdue. I think as soon as he, he, he traded away, uh, well, I mean, we could talk about all the trades he made. We talked about the Jadavian Clowney trade. We could talk about the DeAndre Hopkins trade. I think that he should have been gone a long time ago. Yeah, I mean, you can even go back to the Tunsil trade. Um, yeah. Even with the tire fire that their season they're having, they don't even have a first and second round pick going into next year because of O'Brien. Um, and I, I was reading, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, they're saying that kind of the last straw was a was a blow up fight he had with J.J. Watt, and there's kind of a bit of a, an internal player revolt coming. And I mean, yeah, like, this you, is you a, had to it's see reported that by John Granado. Apparently, J.J. called him out for a, his a shitty coaching ability, and that turned into a gigantic heated exchange on the practice field, and that's basically what started the "we're not going to play for you anymore." Long overdue, man. Yeah, Long overdue. I don't blame them. I mean, to trade away DeAndre Hopkins to see what he's doing in Arizona now is crazy to me. Uh, you bring in a running back where you know running backs are – you can be running back by committee nowadays in the NFL and you'll be fine. Uh, I this, this fucking <laughs> – back, this background is unbelievable. <laughs> it's so fucking – I also stupid. feel like if you're going to bring in an RB, get someone a little bit younger. Like the, the RB window as a whole is just so small. You're bringing in a guy who's already almost at the end of it. You, you're getting limited tread on that tire. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. And he's already what 28, 29 years old. He's, yeah. He doesn't have much more left. Uh, good running back. Don't get me wrong, but doesn't have much left. Do you uh, think without the fight, he would still be coaching this week? No, I think that they no. were ready to fire him because the thing is, is that he managed the entire team and the entire team wasn't doing well. So why would they keep him? Why would they keep him? in the NFL? Coaches get fired on a fucking like eight coaches a year get fired. You know what I mean? So like, why would yeah. he? Why would he be there? I think they knew he was on his last last straw. I'm surprised he got fired during a COVID season. That's the only thing. But they're like, you know what? This season is going to be a wash anyway. Might as well try to start fresh. Yeah, I don't. I like. Him. I would do the same thing. Yeah, I like the firing. I mean, I mean, I like the firing. I feel bad for the guy who doesn't have a job, but you know, he's a millionaire anyway. Um, what's next? I mean, who who becomes the coach? Is Romeo Cornell at 73 years old? Is he going to be the coach? Like, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I'm sure he'll just keep the boat afloat for now, but. Uh... I don't. I don't think Houston cares much to, to do a deep investigation into a coach because I think that they know a few more firings are coming too. So they might try and wait and see if they can get their their first pick of, of one of the the more recent firings. I'm sure. So who's so, next actually on the list? Because Patricia is definitely up there. Uh, yeah. You have uh, oh, Dan. I never remember his last name. The Falcons coach. Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn. Dan Quinn is definitely there. Uh, anyone else? Adam Gase. Mike McCarthy. Uh, you know it's possible. <laughs> it's definitely possible. Uh, the thing about well, well, well I, I wanted to talk Jason about Garrett? all three of those guys. No, Jason Garrett's an offensive coordinator for the Giants. Yeah, we'll see what he can do against the Cowboys this week. So I'm also just I don't know how the hiring from NCAA would work right now. Like, would they let a coach just walk with the season kind of tentatively on the line, or like I don't know how. Well, they would let them interview. That's, That's true. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think anybody's getting hired mid-season, but they'll let them interview for sure. Uh. Yeah, next I think is has to be Dan Quinn, man. If they just can't get it done, and I watched uh, the Monday Nighter, and I was like, "What the fuck is going on here?" It, to watch Matt Ryan not be able to perform and just make stupid throws is is weird to me. He had the game with Calvin Ridley in the end zone at the end of the game. There, it's their offense is built to 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 explode, and for some reason they just can't figure it out. They blow the lead against the Cowboys. Okay, freak onside kick, whatever. I get that, but either way, they blew the lead. They were up 20 nothing in the first quarter. 
They couldn't even put their foot on the Cowboys, who have a shitty ass fucking defense. And I, I think Dan Quinn's next. I mean, Matt Patricia. I mean, he's kind of their defense kind of looks decent. So you know, he's he's kind of saved himself there. But the offense isn't doing well. So Matt Patricia might be safe until the end of the season. But Dan Quinn, I think he's gone. I think I really think yeah. He's you gone. you could I from the limited game I've seen from the Falcons over the last four weeks every time I turn it on you can see the snowball kind of just building momentum as the game progresses and you can see just the players aren't even listening by the end of it anymore yeah don't from what I can tell like it doesn't really seem like he has a locker room but you know it's 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 easy to make that judgment from the from uh from my lazy boy at my house you know yeah exactly same here it's it's easy it's easy to be at play a Monday morning quarterback or uh what do they call it? Uh, yeah, lazy boy quarterback. I'd call it. that's a new one. That's a new. One. We'll call it. That'll be a new segment. It'll be lazy boy <laughs> quarterback with John Eamon. Um, So the NFC East. We'll talk about the NFC East because I think it's absolutely ridiculous that a team that's one, two, and one right now after four games is in the lead. And what do you think the NFC East is going to be one with? Like, what? What's the record? A uh, nine. I can easily see a seven and nine. Uh, I'm going to say nine and seven. Like I a think. six and ten out of the question. No, yeah, that no. won't happen. That won't happen. <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's I figure possible, at least divisional though. games will push one of you up or something. So six and ten. If six and ten wins a division, <laughs> I think I think the NFL needs to change their format completely. Completely. Because oh, if six and ten wins a division, then it makes a run into the playoffs. Imagine how crazy that'd be. They make yeah, it to the Super Bowl. Dude, the Cowboys' offense is too good to not be in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. That's the, it's the, the only so thing, bad to be in the, the only good part of this division. I find like it. Philly is just decimated by injuries. The yeah. Giants lost Saquon, and they didn't never had a defense to begin with. Mm-hmm. Um, if we look at Washington, they're kind of in their own heat right now with Haskins. What's going on there? So you know, Kyle Adams, their starting quarterback. I think there's no reason why Dallas shouldn't win it, but they need a defense, right? I mean, last week was their fucking game to win. I don't know. They fucking they they blew it, <clears throat> and they should getting scored 48 points against you from the Browns is 49 is crazy to me crazy to me how they made they made baker mayfield look like a legit quarterback no no, i'm not i'm not a hater of baker mayfield i just don't think that he's that like that that 49 point kind of guy you know what i mean no and that's fair especially in that offense and i like they i think they ran for like 310 yards on you guys too like it just whatever they did was working yeah like at one point they had nine yards and just air it out all day yeah, exactly. I won't put that nine yards of carry. And it's great that Dak can come back in games and, you know, make comebacks and all that shit. But realistically, he shouldn't be in that position. He threw no. for 500 yards and they still didn't win the fucking game. It's like I haven't seen that since Tony Romo. You know what I no. mean? <laughs> I think you guys, you guys are – I think Dak's on pace for like it was like 6,700 yards and you guys yeah. are like destined for like four or five wins like based on this pace. He's at he's at two thousand almost two thousand yards. Yeah. Uh, after four games, and they're at one they're one and three, which goes to show you how shitty the fucking defense is. Now the Eagles, on the other hand, now the Eagles have weapons to to do well, but for but do I do they though? Because they do. really, no, you have Zach Ertz who gets double teamed on every play, pretty much, and you don't have an offensive line anymore. You don't have any secondary receiver you can really trust. So what do you do? What do you? Yeah. Do? They- they're they're getting destroyed by injuries. Like they uh, was it the right tackle? They lost the right tackle. Then the backup right tackle, like yeah. before the season started or something like that. Yeah, uh, forgetting the names, but and even just wide receiver. Nobody Ray remembers uh, WR one. I think it's Peters. Oh, Ron Jason Peters. Jason defensive? Peters. Yeah. No, Jason Peters. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. As a Cowboys fan, it fucking sucks to watch this. To 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 see the Eagles on top with one two and one record. Is crazy to me, and uh, they drop a game against the Browns. I I didn't I didn't watch uh, the whole, all the entire Browns game because I really thought that they would just smoke them in the first half. So I skipped the first half. As soon as I co- as soon as I come in, I start watching this game. Like, what the fuck is going on? Then they make their comeback, and I'm celebrating. I'm celebrating. My girlfriend thinks it's because of her because she showed up at that time. So you know, <laughs> maybe, maybe she has some good luck, which and I'm getting a dirty look. <laughs> She has a good luck charm, I will say. Um, but- Washington, they're switching their quarterback this week. They're going to Kyle Allen, so they're benching Dwayne Haskins. New York doesn't stand a chance because they have zero weapons anywhere. I almost feel bad uh, at this point over here. Um, do, what? So, out of curiosity, if 
they split games against themselves, everyone within the NFC East, and they lose every other game. Could they? Could a team theoretically advance to a wild card game with a three and thirteen record? No. It's conceptually possible, though, right? Because you need to split every series, right? Okay. So you go five five hundred against the other teams in your division, and you lose every other game. So your only wins are within your conference. Okay. You can. You could technically do it. Well, really yeah, technically, it's possible. Well, oh, yeah, and mathematically, anything is possible, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, not but anything. I, I think that's as low as you can go. You don't think somebody can? I. You can make it on with a one and fifteen record if no, you, you have. If, no, you can't. There's no way not? because you have to play okay. teams within your division. Yeah, right. Within like with division record, you have. To oh, play okay, yeah, it's true. Three, true. let's say. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. If you imagine that, that happens, I would fucking lose my fucking shit. Like the Cowboys made the playoffs. You know, I would actually be happy if the Cowboys made the playoffs at three and thirteen because then they'd be considered the best worst team of all time. And then what happens if they win? That would be the best thing ever. Yeah, three and thirteen, and then just run show in the playoffs. Yeah, like but then, everyone who's injured playoffs, suddenly the is season. miraculously healthy again and everything, and they go in the Cinderella run, you know. <laughs> and everybody's gonna hate it even worse if the Cowboys win the Super Bowl after finishing three and thirteen. Oh, if it I can already first, hear uh, Stephen A. Yeah. Smith morning clip already. Like I can just hear it. <laughs> 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 ugly laugh. <laughs> He's classic, man. Um, so the NBA Finals, John. Uh, Lakers are up three one. Um, it looks like the Heat are done. Uh, I, all that hope, all that hype around the Heat, it's over now. I don't know what to do. I put money on the Heat. I guess I'm going to lose it. I don't know. I, I, I'm a sucker for the Cinderella story because I don't have a team in the NBA. But uh, it, I don't, I don't want to say that they're done because we've seen LeBron carry worse teams to a, to a game six and, a, and even a game, save, a game seven. Excuse me, but um, it's, uh, it's tough. But they weren't playing LeBron. But yeah, I was, that is the caveat. You're you're playing against a guy who's doing this sort of thing. As annoying as LeBron is, and as a, much of a baby as he is, walking off the court when they're losing, the guy's the best player in the world, and it's no doubt. There's no him and AD are the two best players in the series, and then you have the next best five are all on the Heat. I don't see LeBron dropping three games in a row. I don't see the Lakers dropping three games in a row to Jimmy buckets. And, no, you know, it might even go to Game Seven, but I. If, but if but then you get to Game 7, and it's like, okay, anybody can win this game. You know what I mean? But yeah, exactly. I feel like if we get to Game 7, then we're just going to see LeBron hit another level that we didn't know was possible. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a moment guy, and, and that's why I, I personally love watching him for that reason. Um, and it, it's, like, uh, it's like Jimmy Butler said, like, if you want to win, you have to beat LeBron. That's what the NBA is nowadays, and, and LeBron's proven it. Like, he wants it this year. Well, the guy's made nine out of the last ten finals with some good teams, some shitty teams, you know, and it's like... Yeah. When do, when's this guy ever gonna go away? And when's he ever gonna get the respect he deserves? Right? Um, I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm optimistic for the Heat. I think that there's a sliver of a chance, but they gotta they gotta like really make a statement this game. Like Jimmy buckets has to put his balls on LeBron James's face or something. Like there's something something like that actually has to happen. Like physically, yeah. take out his nuts and place them on top of LeBron James's forehead. I like just sign Lance Stevenson for one game and just just put a. Just put him on LeBron for like 20 minutes. Why not? Yeah, fuck it. I'm sure Lance Stevenson loved that shit. Blowing his ear a bit, you know. Make it old school. <laughs> uh, so we spoke about the NHL a bit before. Uh, there was a lot of trades that happened this week. Uh, especially one in Montreal. A big one in Montreal. Max Domi, uh, after changing his profile, Instagram profile 100 times, um, asking to play, be playing center, is finally out of Montreal. Him and a third-round pick are gone to the Columbus Blue Jackets for Josh Anderson. What do you think about the trade? I personally liked it. Uh, I, I would have preferred it without the pick, but I understand why it's thrown in there. You get into a bidding war, you get... If you want your guy, go get it, and I love it. Um, this is a guy that Montreal... Oh, like there's, there's no comparable to what we've had in the last decade, because we never had a player like this. We never had a guy that can put up 30 goals on, on a really, like, in, in kind of the best world scenario. He'll put up 30 goals, and he'll beat up 10 guys. I, I mean, I hope beat up 10 guys. He's, he's like a poor man's Tom Wilson kind of thing, but he just has to stay healthy. Uh, yeah. I, I don't see him 30 goals. I mean, that's, I, I wish no, I don't see yeah, 30 yeah, goals I, in Montreal. I'm saying perfect world scenario. He, he'll be a 30 goal guy, but he's closer to like a 20. So is he going to play third line? Because everybody's saying that he's on the third line. I think if he's going to be that kind of guy, you put him on the second line. I think he's going to be, 
for now, with the team that we have going into next season, he'll be a second line guy. If he, but he's he's the type of guy like if we want to be a legit Stanley Cup contender, he's a two three flex kind of player where like he can play a second line role when we need him to, and he'll provide the grit. Like he'll he'll round out a line with his grittiness, his toughness to create space and like get the pucks from the corners, get the pucks in front of the net for for, for some more skill guys like a Drouin or a, or a Suzuki sort of thing. Um, that's where I think he'll fit into a second line role. But if we have him on the second line, relying on him to be a goal scorer on a nightly basis, like that's where he's going to start to get criticism. And that's when we're putting him outside of the role he's meant to be. I think that's where fans are going to start to, to harp on him. And well, I would say this is almost a classic uh, Berzavain trade, right? He doesn't really, I mean, it's a risky trade in some sense, but also kind of a YOLO trade too, where if it doesn't pan out, yeah. it doesn't really cost you all that much in the grand scheme of things, right? You weren't going to sign Domi, or if you were, he was going to play a, a minimal role for next season. Your third round pick likely won't turn into anything anyways. So worst case, it's a bust. You send him down somewhere, you trade him for a fifth or a sixth after the fact and everything, and you move on. That's pretty yeah. much it. I mean, at that point, you flip him for something else, another asset. People don't realize that, like, everybody's like, I don't understand the third round. The third rounder is what needed to get the deal done. Bergevin went to get a player. He wanted a big guy, a physical guy. We needed a winger. Domi refused to play wing. So what are we going to do with this guy? He's absolutely, he's dead weight at this point. As much as I like Domi, and yeah, he put up 70 points in Montreal last two years ago, I don't think that he was developing to what we had hoped he was going to develop. And we flipped Galchenyuk for Josh Anderson. I don't mind that trade, technically. You know no, what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, and I like Josh mm-hmm. Anderson. I just hope he stays healthy. That's the biggest thing on him. But you can't predict injuries, I always say. so. No, exactly. I think that we traded Domi for what we wanted him to be. We got a player for, in the role that we wanted Domi to play. And we got the size and we got the toughness that – you know, a lot of fans complain for. So we were kind of we're becoming a bigger team while still getting the goal scoring we hope to get from a winger in his position. Yeah. Uh, a few other trades also. The San Jose uh, Sharks. get into those, wait, breaking news, actually. Oh. Um, so the Senators did not give a qualifying offer to Duclair. Apparently, okay. Duclair acted as his own agent, and they offered him a substantial raise, but he declined it and is going to be heading to free agency. Crazy. Well, I mean, is that how it works? I mean, he's going to – I mean, yeah, I guess he's going to – they're going to – What was the levels. offer? I'm curious because how much is Duclair asking for? We don't he's, know. This is literally breaking news. It just happened. So dumb. Get out of here. Some, some of these hockey players need to get out of their own way. You know what I mean? Well, some of the athletes need to get out of their own way. He, he Get an agent. These agents, they know. Get Alan Walsh. Fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Like, get, <laughs> get somebody. Fuck. Alan Walsh is based out of Montreal. You might as well just get him. Fuck. Like uh, – I don't understand this guy. Interesting I, I tactic. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. He's not going to get as much as what Ottawa was willing to pay for him. And we saw uh, Duclair made the All-Star game. Cool. We saw Duclair decline big time in the second half of the season. Did not play as well, uh, that well. So for him to think that he has some sort of leverage is crazy to me. Crazy to me. Yeah. Unless he just really doesn't want to be in Ottawa. That's probably it. Ottawa. Who does? Boring. Fuck yeah. What do they honestly? What does Ottawa have? All they have is like a red lobster. That's all they have. They got Matt Murray now. Oh, they did get Matt Murray actually. That's what, that was next. So uh, Matt Murray traded to the Sens for uh, John Gruden, coach of the Las Vegas Raiders, and uh, a second round pick. What do you think, John? Uh, my first question is, how does Duke feel about this? Uh, uh, it's true. It's a good point. Um, but I like it. I, I think it, it's a trade. That actually makes sense for both sides, and it's actually funny. Uh, with the pick that uh, the Penguins got in the trade, they actually used it to draft a goalie. They got Joel Blumquist. Yeah. I think I said that right. Uh, goalie <laughs> out of Finland. Really good young guy. Um, and, you know, Gruden is he's a bit more of a project, but I think that they really just wanted the pick and, and kind of a bit of a flyer prospect because Gruden, is, he's been a point-per-game guy in most of the teams he's played on. So maybe they're just hoping for that trajectory, but... Um, I like to trade a lot for Ottawa. It makes yeah. sense. He's, uh, I think Murray's an RFA this year. Um, he's 26. He's, you know, in the prime window, and they're they're a young team that's looking to kind of hit the ground running. So I like to which, trade a lot for both sides. Which means, what are they going to do with, um, with what's his name? Well, I, they've already told Craig Anderson that uh, they're not going to resign him. That's what it is. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, I thought um, there was rumors of a trade, but I guess they're just no, not going to get rid of. They're just going to let they him walk. Have one goalie. Um, his name starts with an H. I'm, I can't remember right now. But, um, but in Ottawa, it's like, are they doing big things? Like, are they doing 
are they moving in the right direction? I mean, who, the, out of the players they drafted this year, I know they had two first round picks. What? Oh yeah, was... they're, they're they're doing a lot of the right things. They're they kind of they 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 went the the slow game for the uh, the rebuild. So they kind of just siphoned off pieces slowly but surely, and then just accumulated everything into one date. Yeah. And it was this year's draft. Um, they've also like their uh, their AHL team was one of the best teams in the league last year. Um, they had an incredible amount of talent down there. Um, and they have a few guys like um, Stutzel. Um, but did they get Raymond as well, I believe it was? I think like they did both, draft Mason yeah, Raymond. Yeah. Both those guys. Oh, are Lucas be, Raymond, sorry. Yeah, they're going to be elite-level talents. Um, they, I, I like what Ottawa's doing. I hate that we have to play against them. And the one thing I will say is Ottawa always finds a way to fuck it up. So I'm very excited to see how they do it this time. Um, also, the Sharks... Um, get David Devin Dubnik. Devin Dubnik to me for a fifth round pick. Devin Dubnik to me is the, the the ultimate like we need a goalie that can play a few games and maybe get some wins. And Devin Dubnik's the guy. Yeah, I. It looks like the it's 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 just complimentary help for for uh, Martin Jones, kind of like Jake Allen, Carey Price. If, yeah. If, if they're gonna be playing that many games, Martin Jones can need a break here and there, and you you get Devin Dubnik for a relatively cheap price, and and now you got a one A one B. That's the thing too is like I think a lot of teams are moving towards that two goalie system now. Uh, yeah. And I wrote an I wrote an article this week about Henrik Lundqvist not signing, um, while well, getting released, basically getting bought out by the New York Rangers. So he's a free agent as well. Now I don't know what's gonna happen with. I don't know what's gonna happen with uh, Henrik Lundqvist, but I do think, I do think that he's gonna be a part of one of those two goalie systems like the Sharks have right now with Jones and Dubnik and the Habs do with Jake Allen and Carey Price. Now, where's yeah. a landing? Where's the landing spot for for Lundqvist? But you think he's gonna split games with someone? He's not gonna be a pure backup oh, oh, yeah, or yeah, yeah, trying yeah. to help 100%. a guy learn. I mean, maybe, maybe a young I goalie. Think he still wants to pull. He's for sure gonna want a 40-40, like a, sorry, a fifty-fifty split, like 40-40. 40 games each kind of yeah. thing um i'm sure he'll, he'll be happy with 35 but like when you're that good you don't lose that competitive juice and i'm sure that henrik is is sitting there kind of just like i wouldn't say he's annoyed he didn't play last year because he he's a smart guy he understands the situation he was in but he wants to get back in someone's crease i uh at calgary flames if if they because they don't have the most cap space for them so yeah uh, what, what, and, what's and, going right here what do you would do, what would you expect to pay for a goalie that's going to play half the time I don't think he'll get more than like three and a half, four. He'll, I mean, sign, I he'll probably sign for vet minimum right now. He's getting paid. Like, there, I yeah. think it was, it was what, seven, seven and a half from New York? Eight and a half cap hit. Eight and a half? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So he, I don't think he's looking for money. I think he's looking for a playing opportunity, and I think that he'll he'll take a discount to play because he's well, getting paid right now. Yeah, well, like you said, yeah, exactly. He's still getting his eight and a half million from the, or whatever his contract is, but his cap hit was eight and a half million. But he's still getting paid from the, the Rangers. So I don't think that he'll, I, don't, I think he'll get more than the league minimum, the, the veterans minimum, only because there's going to be a lot of teams that want him. A lot of teams. Yeah, that's true. Be like four or five teams that might negotiate with him. I do think that he might get a three to three and a half, you know, maybe if a team is generous and they have a, enough space, a $4 million deal as a backup. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I, if they compare him to like a guy like Jake Allen, you know, Jake Allen, that's his contract, three and a half. So it's like, where, where does King, where does King Henry stand compared to these guys? And he, he's going to be taking playing thirty five games this year. Why not? I mean, and I heard the guy's the biggest rope in the league. So like, fucking, got to give him extra money. He's got to support that rope. Oh, I absolutely agree. Um, but that's but like that he has a big dick reason, or just in general. Well, I agree to all the above. <laughs> There's a reason why they call him the king. Um, but so the only reason why I say that like he'll take a vet minimum contract is because I think that for him his priority is is the playing time. Like I said, but I think he just wants a cup. He's at the age where so he's where got all the accolades. Like he doesn't really have anything left to prove to anyone except for himself, and he wants a cup. He's got everything else to his name, and he for sure wants a cup. So I think you even look like a, at a team like Washington. Yeah. They're going to have a young goalie in Samsonov, and they're probably going to want to ride him and give him some experience. Yeah, because Holpi like, is Holpi is one foot out the door. Yeah, Holpi yeah. Holpi's gone there. Um, so that's that's one example. I can also see him maybe going out out west to St. Louis now that they've lost Jake Allen. If they don't want to, if they don't want to bring up a young guy too early, they want to kind of bring in a solid vet to to help Bennington. Yeah, that's another landing spot. But I think it's going to be something like that where he has a chance to win a cup and he has a chance to get some playing time. Two landing spots I really see out west, and I like the way the, the way that you brought up the west side. Is that is that I see Edmonton or Vancouver? 
Vancouver with that with Thatcher Demko there, I think that having a guy like that to kind of groom him and take away some of the pressure, and then see who's going to be the guy in the playoffs. I mean, th- they know that Demko is going to be the guy in the future for the future, right? So yeah. it's kind of it's kind of like he maybe even bring got in a the, guy. Uh, DiPietro too. It's true they do, and he's a young kid. They're, they're the same age. Uh, yeah. Demko and DiPietro are the same age, so you know maybe you can trade DiPietro. You could probably get a lot for that. And if you want to bring in a guy like like Henrik Lundqvist to help Demko get through get through his. Uh, get through the season but i do like maybe in edmonton because what we saw in edmonton last year wasn't great when it comes to goalies i mean koskinen and then smitty it was it, it didn't work i mean a koskinen as much as i like him as a goalie i think that mm-hmm. he's a guy he's a guy that can fit in a two goalie system he's not a guy that can play 60 games you know what i mean oh i absolutely agree um i will say one last team as a a bit of a, a- kind of out of left field because they don't have a lot of cap space left. But if Lundqvist really wants to win, maybe he takes a, a discount to play in Vegas. If Vegas is another thing too because now they got rid of Fleury, right? So yeah. what, are, what are we going to do? I mean, Leonard is going to be the guy. But Leonard, as, he's huge, right? So he takes up so much space. But he's not – He's he hasn't been – uh, maybe a top 10 goalie in the league. He's played well in specific situations and he's looked great, but I don't know if he's going to be the guy going forward. Is he the, t- is he the guy that's going to get them to the Stanley Cup Finals? I don't know, but if you give, uh, if you give Henrik Lundqvist uh, rest all year, the pressure yeah. of not losing his job, the pressure of not having uh, Sesterkin, is that his name? The goalie in the... Uh, Shesterkin. Yeah, like it's really hard to pronounce. Shesterkin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Before that, Georgiev. I mean, he had all these guys always trying to look for his job. So if he goes there knowing that he has a limited role, I think it's going to be the best thing for him. Vegas is a yeah. good call as well. I like that. Um, we didn't talk about it, but I wanted to talk about it with you because Pease knows dog shit about hockey. Um, Patrick Hornfist traded to the Panthers uh, for your boy, Mike Matheson. What do you think? Um, I think it is a good trade for Mikey. I, I've... I've been, you know, I don't have any personal insight into into what's going on in Florida. I think that he may have just fallen out of favors with uh, the new coaching staff. Um, I think that a change of senior will be good for him. Um, although <laughs> Patrick Horkus was not happy. No, no, yeah, didn't he dump all his stuff on the highway? He or threw something? all of his stuff onto the. Well, at first he said no to the trade. Yeah. Um, and then I think I'm I'm just assuming here that Pittsburgh said, okay, well, it's Florida or Wilkes-Barre. So we said, okay, well, I'll fly in a jet instead of a, taking a charter bus. Of course. And yeah. uh, so, and then he threw all of his equipment, like I said, threw all of his equipment outside on the uh, on his driveway. Like, wasn't even trying to hide it; just scattered throughout the driveway. Just not passed. happy. But okay, listen, I understand you're leaving Pittsburgh to go to the Panthers, but you're leaving Pittsburgh. You're leaving the Penguins to go to the Panthers. That sucks. But you're leaving Pittsburgh to move to Florida. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's absolutely so, fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's more to behind the scenes on that one, but uh, but you know what from. Mikey, uh, you know, I'm happy for him. Yeah, you know, I, I think hope, it's good for I him. I hope he does well in Pittsburgh. I think that he needs a change of scenery because he's not the defensive liability that the numbers, that the analytical numbers are showing right now, in my opinion. Um, I think that he's been having a little bit of a rough go in the last uh, in the last couple of seasons, but I know what he's capable of. I've seen him do it, and I've, you know, it's like I told you in the group chat. The guys made me look stupid enough times on the ice that I have, <laughs> I have no business saying anything ill about him. So, so I was a, I was a fan of Matheson when he was getting drafted. I mean, obviously he's a Montreal kid, so you know we have a soft spot for him. Uh, I think he's great. He's a, a, such an offensive defensive, but we have seen him get turned around a few times um, uh, defensively, anyway. But he's a he's a good player, man. He's a really good player, and I think in a in a better system he might work. And maybe it didn't work in Florida. Who knows? We'll see what happens in Pittsburgh. But they they're actually they're very good at scouting in Pittsburgh. So I think that yeah. they see something in Mike Matheson and also Colton Sevier also. But they see something in Mike Matheson that they might be able to use, and they were lacking defense also. So losing an older guy like Hornfist, who did do a lot for the team and the organization, and he played well in those Stanley Cup runs I think you know it's time to get rid of out with the old and in with the new Mike, Mike, Mike Matheson is still he's still a very young guy he has a he has another 10 years left in his career I think that he's going to be he'll he'll be he'll be solid yeah uh, and his contract is not terrible like I know that some people have kind of pointed to that as, as a detriment but it it's four and a half million dollars and for our D one, for a puck moving yeah. D that can run a power play one, once we get through COVID and in you know two three years down the line four and a half million dollars is going to be nothing Really for, in terms of a percentage of cap, so uh, you know, uh, let's, I'm hoping for the best for Mike in a, in a change of scenery here. All right, Eagle, it's rapid fire time. All right, first one we got uh, brotherly hate. Jalen Ramsey and Golden Tate got into a fight uh, midfield over some family beef. I don't know if you guys had any details in terms of what uh, they actually fought over. 
Yeah, so what the story is is that Jalen Ramsey has two kids with Golden Tate's sister. And they've broken up or whatever, and there was like a lot of beef. So they, they played the whole game, and then after the game, they end up fighting on the field. It's fucking <laughs> stupid. <laughs> like if I see the guy, it's like it's on site kind of thing. Hey, listen, you have a problem. The guy mistreated your sister. I understand it completely. And if anybody yeah. fucks with my sister, I'll fuck him up. Uh, <laughs> I'm I was gonna looking say, at my girlfriend. Dana, she's like, I, I would blame it. I would, I would do the same thing. But like you said, I, I find it funny that you waited till the end of the game and just like found him at center field and just was like, all right, let's do it. They probably told him, don't do anything before the game. Do it after. Oh, absolutely. Right. I guarantee you. What's the best way to get COVID? Fight a guy who, who has two kids with your sister. All right, next topic. Don't put a ring on it. Uh, Lakers fans have generated a petition of which they've gotten to about 1,500 signatures already, declaring that Kyle Kuzma's inconsistent performances should not merit a ring if the Lakers actually win. This is absolutely ridiculous, John. This is the <laughs> stupidest thing I've heard in my life. So this is back to what we were talking about earlier. Did Stamkos deserve a ring? I think Kuzma oh. deserves a fucking ring. The guy plays like 100 minutes of fucking game. You know what I mean? I like the if guy. You needed, if you needed proof that people are need a hobby because we've just been inside for too long, like this is it. Yeah, yeah. Lakers, Lakers fans are the fucking worst. They officially become the worst fan base. Oh, you know who's a Lakers fan? No. Alex the Ooh. intern. I just oh, realized. <laughs> we should check with him to see if he signed it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, asking. No, I think he's a. I think he's a Kuzma guy. I think he likes Kuzma, from what I remember. But we could be wrong. We don't know. We don't know. Depends on what the experts say. And last one I have for you today. You have it called all the fans, all the COVID. I was gonna say Florida man gets sick. Um, the Miami <laughs> Dolphins are gonna be allowing a full attendance in a couple weeks to their games. I believe the uh, stadium allowance is sixty five thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, and this is gonna be right around election period too. So great decision by the Dolphins franchise. So not only is the president gonna get COVID, but sixty five thousand people in Florida are gonna get COVID. Um, we know we see. Listen, I'm not a guy like I'm not. I'm not the like a. Uh, uh, I'm not panicking when it comes to COVID. I think the numbers. You know, I mean, we can get into politics, whatever. But this is a. It, the disease does spread very quickly, so don't fucking spread it. They they're already allowing like thirteen thousand people a game in. So why let sixty five thousand people in there? And Cronky's so probably. I think, I think what happens is Flo- the Dolphins haven't said they'll let sixty five thousand, and the Florida governor said they're allowed full capacity. Ah, uh, okay, there you go. So it's kind of like they opened up the bars for the Tampa Bay Lightning here, but now they're just opening <laughs> up the bars for the entire Miami Dolphin stadium. Uh, I just, all right. I, mean, I can't, I can't wait. Roulette, to, roulette. I can't wait to see how many guys got COVID from drinking out of the Stanley Cup with uh, Killorn and uh, and Cooch. Oh man, it's gonna be it's too <laughs> fucking funny. All right, John, I appreciate you taking the time to come hey, on, man. I, I have a I have a surprise one for you actually. I don't know if okay, you guys saw this before. Um, let's go. Aaron Rodgers was on the Pat McAfee show because he's friends with uh, AJ Hawk, who's also on that show and everything. So he, oh, he does yeah. a weekly occurrence. And they were talking about how the media spins a, a bunch of things uh, regarding his career and the whole stuff. And at one point they said, you know, like, oh, you know, last year you were kind of, you looked washed up and everything. Um, it's hard to kind of figure out whether or not you were good or not. And he replied back something on the lines of, you know, some of the other quarterbacks, uh, you know, I laugh at them because people said, uh, talk about all my down years. Um, a lot of the times my down years are career years for most quarterbacks. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, you leave That's it to Rodgers to be an asshole, you know what I mean? But it's a perfect comment. I think he's taking his victory lap around the NHL, and I love it. Or how, NFL, Jesus. Excuse me. How do you feel about uh, Rodgers since you're a Vikings fan? Well, you know what? If he's going to be good, at least we're not competitive. <laughs> I'm looking at it. But, uh, I, uh, I, hate the, I hate the Packers, so are Eagle, but I can respect the man. <laughs> all, all right, right. That's... That's the show for this week, boys. Uh, much better without peace. I don't know. I think you agree. Yeah. I mean, we started on time. We finished on time. Not much more to do than that. Yeah, I mean, you can't do better than that. I mean, peace is late. Duke couldn't show up. Alex, the intern, is uh, reading up on experts. And uh, we are just we just banged out a great show, boys. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, tomorrow, uh, we're going to figure it out, John, what time. But we're going to do weekly sauce with Alex, and we're going to break down uh, the draft. You guys know a lot more than I do when it comes to those guys. So we'll talk about the draft, and we'll talk about the Habs picks, and we'll see what Alex actually thinks about Caden Gooley. Um, and that's it, boys. Peace. Don't forget to purchase worked. your hot sauce. I know we don't have merch on screen, but it's still there. <laughs> oh, it's a good point. This episode is brought to you by Chetty's Hot Sauce. 
as long as uh, as well as Mike's BBQ Rub. BBQ Rub. So Chetty's Hot Sauce.ca. You can use. We have a code promo code Hot Sauce twenty five for twenty five percent off on the entire site. Uh, but if you want the best rubs in town and the best sauce, it's uh, Mike's BBQ Rub MTL.com. Use Hot Sauce ten for ten percent off uh, on all individual bottles over there. They have a sick the the the, the truffle mustard truffle is unfucking believable, man. It's my favorite thing ever. And on that. Ciao. You've been listening to Hot Sauce Sports.